in our school days, you probably all had the experience of going to school with maybe a guy or a girl who was a particular genius. It happens on occasion, right? Uh, so what does a genius look like? And one might argue that they have you know, leather elbow patches and slightly thicker glasses and a fairly pronounced side parting, um, but not necessarily the case. Not necessarily the case. Um, you, it could be that the genius in your class was the guy with the blue hair. You just, you just can't really tell, you know? Uh, it could also be that you know someone who was particularly talented at, at art or something. What does a good artist look like? Well, see, there's no, there's no, we have a stereotype in our heads, probably. You know, people who are good at art, like long, flowing, multicolored dresses and tops that don't match, all right? And just lots, lots of color and just freedom, man. But like, that, that's the stereotype. It's not necessarily the case, okay? I, I think hopefully, hopefully, we've all had the experience of meeting someone in our lives who was particularly saintly, particularly holy. So what does a saint look like? What does a saint look like? Again, we have the kind of stereotypical image, oh, you'd know, oh, you'd know. You'd know if you saw a saint, they have a special glue about them. And maybe they do on occasion, but I think for the most part, not really. I think for the most part, if, you, if you've had any maybe saintly relations or you've had a, uh, a particular religious sister or priest who you've met who was just very, very, very close to the Lord, what do they look like? Kind of ordinary, really. When we think of Mary and Joseph growing up, well, when, not when, when Jesus was growing up, uh, we think of them, you know, arriving in Bethlehem. No room in the inn. Here are, you know, like Our Lady conceive, uh, preserve them all, sin of original sin. Jesus, a holy man. One could argue that there was nothing particularly visibly saintly about them. You know, they, they were turned away, door after door, in after in, sent away. Jesus in his own hometown isn't recognized as anything special. In fact, they look for signs and wonders like, yeah, do, do some of those magic tricks you've done elsewhere. Do, do them here as well. And they don't, rec they don't recognize, not only is he like, particularly holy or something, they don't, they don't recognize him as the Messiah. So here we have uh, the, the, the gospel, according to John here. Jesus left Samaria for Galilee, so that's where he was from, the region where he was from. Anyway. Uh, he himself had declared that there is no respect for a prophet in his own country. So those who know you best, in theory, should know what's in here as well. But it seems that uh, where he was from, no, they didn't. They didn't recognize him as anything special at all. And so John kind of is, is surprised here, but on his arrival, the Galileans actually received him well, having seen all that he had done in Jerusalem during the festival, which they too had attended. Okay, so, so this time he seemed to actually, they seemed to actually uh, be much more favorable towards him. There's another Bible passage where they wanted to throw him off the hill that their town was built on. Okay, so like, again, while we may have stereotypes for how intelligent people should look or how artists should look or how saints should look, it's not really the case. In reality, all of the above look kind of normal. Nothing particular to, to, to give them away at all. So what does a saint look like? A saint looks like you. A saint looks like you. All of the, hopefully, holy people we've met in our lives, they were exteriorly ordinary. Even St. Faustina talks about uh, being in the convent and certain other sisters spying on her. So when she, well, another, there's another situation where she was a novice and uh, they thought she had TB, right? So like, like her lungs are rotting away, which is fairly debilitating. Um, so she, she wasn't physically very strong. So when it came to emptying the, or draining the spuds, so you have to hold onto the lid and pour this big heavy pot for some very hungry sisters um, and ho you know, hold the spuds in, drain the water off and get the pot back up without losing the whole lot, you know? So you want to be fairly buff. Um, so, same, so I've seen it again, she was trying to do this and she'd fail miserably, like she'd just hold onto the lid and 
a whole lot would go, you know, then you have to pick all the hot spots back into the pot. Uh, so she kind of avoided the job, not because she didn't want to do it, because she just wasn't physically strong enough. Again, you know, very, very ill. Uh, but she said, then she spoke to the Lord about this. She said, Lord, I'm just, you know, I'm just miserable that I, I can't do this simple job. And now the other sisters are complaining that I'm lazy. Uh, on one, one occasion, the, the sister's punishment for her, right, because they considered her lazy, was to sit there in the kitchen while all the other sisters cleaned up. Like, so everyone else is working and you're sitting here in obedience. It's not that I don't want to work. All right, but now everyone who comes into the kitchen goes, what's she doing? You know, just sitting there while everyone else is, that, that was like, you know, so they didn't, they didn't recognize the saint that was in their midst. And so she complains to the Lord about just not being able to do these, 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 these tasks and just being so weak. And the Lord says, do these things out of love for me. Do them all out of love for me. So the following evening, then when she had to, uh, when it was someone's job to, to drain the spuds, she rushes there, grabs the pot, picks it up, gets the lid, drains it out, and does so with great ease. And says, what's, what's this about? Takes the lid off, and there inside are roses. Now, uh, the, uh, not of the chocolate kind, the, the flower kind. <laughs> the flower kind. And I presume they did eat potatoes that evening somehow, but point being, uh, mm -hmm. Jesus was saying through this, anything you do out of love for me is transformed. Anything you do out of love for me is transformed. So she's a great saint, not recognized by those who lived with her day in and day out. What does a saint look like? A saint looks like you. So it's, it's, it's the, uh, as Matthew Kelly would say, the, the best version of you. We all have our rough days and our the, the vices that we're struggling with, but the best version of you is a saint. The best version of you is a saint. And all of us are called to sanctity, every single one of us. Not just some elite or some the religious or whoever it may be, or people in, from yesteryear. All of us are called to be saints. A saint looks like you, the best version of you. And that may not be recognized by people, just like it wasn't recognized in Mary Joseph, it wasn't recognized in Jesus himself. So let us respond to this great call from the Lord to be a saint. Lord, whatever in this Lenten season you're trying to, to, to prune out of our lives or to change, to heal, to redirect, to orient us again towards our ultimate goal, towards the greatest goods, towards prayer, fasting, almsgiving. Lord, let us not resist. And let us become today the saints that you're calling us to be. Amen.